Uh, today's session is all about uh, knowledge sharing, improved decision making, and practical application, which Mr. Vijay is going to talk about. Just want to highlight a few, you know, contribution of elect uh, Cape Electric for our nation. In 1998, they were the first people to introduce SPDs and uh, for protecting industrial electronic systems. DC combiner solution for solar PV were unknown once Cape delivered the outdoor DC panel in 2002. In 2004, technical seminar, that's where the knowledge and the seminar started by Cape in 2004 on lightning protection. It not only helped the industry in solving failure related to lightning, such as an earthing, but gave in-depth knowledge about international standards. In 2016, TNS system with PME for industrial earthing and with where and without our electrode in soil was introduced 2019 global earthing system interconnecting ehv hv lv and elv system for large large industrial and commercial installation and smart smart cities were introduced in 2022 the last year solve a digital platform as a knowledge and process partner to ensure safe operation of low voltage electricity was introduced. Leading the market with the right solution is Cape Moto and the team Cape Electric are continuously trained to provide end-to-end -end solution from design to implementation rather than just selling a product for the customer need. Today, we have, as I said, Mr. Gopu Kumar as a moderator. He will join us after Vijay finishes his company. He will join us to sum up the uh, today's session. As I said, he is logged in from Chile, South America. And uh, our subject expert today, Mr. Vijay Singh, is an accomplished engineer in electric, electrical and electronics with over 10 years of experience. He has specialized in lighting and such protection system. His expertise in this area is derived from extensive research and practical site studies of more than 100 sites related to search and lighting protection. His experience includes conducting site studies in various sectors such as data centers, hospitals, telecom industries. Additionally, he has worked on projects for major oil and gas companies such as HPCL, IOCL, design and supporting the implementation of lightning and such protection system for these projects. A rich experience in handling projects with major government sectors such as Airport Authority of India, Indian Railways, NDPC, BHL has made him as a specialist in such protection devices within the country. Currently, he serves as product manager for such protection devices at Cape. I myself, my the host of this today's uh, session with 33 years of experience in the fire industry and led to form various associations. I'm the founder of founder and past president of FSAI, Fire and Security Association of India, and founder member of Forum of Critical Utility Services, which is called Focus. And recently, in January, we founded National Federation of Electrical Engineers for Electrical Safety, Ele Electric Safety. And uh, I would like to welcome our speaker for the day, Mr. Vijay Singh. So over to uh, Vijay. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to give uh, some technical details about surgery protection devices. Uh, let me just share my screen. Okay, so last uh, week we had a webinar on the uh, importance of connecting leads in surge protection devices. Like how we had discussed last time, <coughs> As even a small increase in uh, length of a connecting wire for SPDs can result in huge increase in uh, voltage protection level of the SPD. That means even uh, for up to one meter cable, there was a voltage drop of around one kV per meter <coughs> for cable length of one meter. 
So this week we are going to discuss about uh, the importance of backup fuse in an SPD and selection of SPDs. Like what are the parameters we have to uh, take care? What are the parameters we have to think while selecting an SPD? So again, we have multiple parameters. So we will be covering uh, one important parameter like impulse current in this webinar. Remaining we are going to cover in our upcoming webinar. So <clears throat> we are going to start now. So these are the various uh, international standards for surge protection devices. That is IEC 61643 part 11 2011 uh, for uh, test methods in LV power. Again, the same we had discussed last time also. So we are going to skip it and uh, come right to the point. Now we have to discuss about the connections of SPD. So basically there are two types of SPD connections, connection two and connection one uh, we have given the name. In first type of connections, you can see <clears throat> all three lines R, Y, B uh, neutral is directly connected to earth and there is a fuse in between all three lines and SPD. See, this, this type of connections is called uh, 4 plus 0 connections because you can see all four uh, connections are directly connected to earth. In second ty uh, type of connection that is in connection type 2, all three lines are first connected to neutral. And from that neutral, there is a connection from neutral to P. So this type of connection is called 3 plus 1 connection. Three numbers of connection from line to neutral and one number of connection from neutral to P. Again, I will repeat the same. There are two types of connections, connection type 1 and connection type 2. Uh, connection type 1, all three lines and neutral is simultaneously connected to P. Whereas in uh, connection type 2, all three lines are first connected to neutral. And then neutral is connected through SPD4 uh, to P. So <clears throat> here are some points uh, regarding connection of SPD. Uh, point number one, connection between live conductors and P, that is a common mode protection, which is shown in connection type one. Uh, second is connection between live conductors, uh, that is differential mode protection that is shown in connection type two. Protection between line conductors and P is compulsory, whether you are achieving it directly by connecting to the line uh, P conductor or through neutral. <clears throat> protection between line conductors and neutral is recommended to ensure equipment protection. To protect our equipment, we have to uh, protect line, uh, connect line conductors and neutral. Protect, uh, protection between line conductors is optional. That is, if you want to connect an SPD in between uh, two lines, you can do that, but that is optional. That is not a mandatory requirement. Some equipment may require both uh, common mode protection for impulse withstand and differential mode protection for impulse immunity to ensure overall protection against transient voltage due to switching or from atmospheric origin. Uh, <clears throat> example, class one equipment or class two equipment with uh, FE connection. This we are going to discuss further. So here you can see these two type of connections in first of, uh, case that is connection type one, four plus zero connection. You can see that voltage protection level of the system, the complete system will be equal to voltage protection level of the each SPD. Whereas in case of CT2, that is connection type two, three plus one connection, the effective voltage protection level will be the sum of voltage drop across SPD one, two or three plus uh, the voltage drop across SPD4. Now, again, we have to understand here as we discussed in the last webinar, actual voltage protection level, that effective voltage protection level will be equal to UP1 plus UP2 plus voltage drop across the connecting bias. This we have to understand. This uh, we discussed in detail in last webinar. <clears throat> now, where the protection between line conductors and P is provided by a series connection of SPD, that is in CT2, uh, in uh, CT2, uh, <coughs> protection modes, example, single mode SPD line to neutral plus neutral to earth, according to CT2, this series connection shall fulfill the above voltage uh, protection level requirement. That is the required voltage protection level at the connection point. That is uh, the imp uh, impulse withstand capacity of the equipment. We have to see what is the impulse withstand capacity of the equipment. And accordingly, we have to select the voltage protection level, which will be sum of UP1 plus UPP2 uh, plus the voltage drop across the connecting wires. So this we have to ensure, especially in type of uh, in CT2 uh, type of connections, three plus one type of connections, we have to ensure that. 
now uh, a manufacturer should mention a combined voltage protection level in their data sheet but if the manufacturer has not mentioned that in the data sheet it should be calculated by the addition of voltage protection levels given for the individual SPDs uh, mode of protection which are connected in series. So <clears throat> generally all the manufacturers should mention uh, the combined voltage protection level but in case they have not mentioned this we can calculate it by uh, adding a uh, voltage drop across SPD 1, 2 or 3 plus voltage drop across SPD 4 uh, along with the voltage drop across the connecting wires. It is recommended that the voltage protection level provided by SPD does not exceed 80% of the required rated impulse voltage for the equipment. That means uh, whatever the impulse uh, withstand voltage of the equipment is, let's say it is 2.5 kV, the voltage protection level of the effective voltage protection level of the SPD shall not increase 80% of that value. That means 2 kV. Okay. Uh, that is called the safety margin. We have to keep some margin. This safety margin is not necessary where one of the following, uh, following cases applies where the equipment is directly connected to the SPD terminals because that is going to reduce the wire length by a huge uh, margin and hence a voltage drop across the wire length will be very less where a protection scheme according to V type or bus bar mounting is applied. Uh, this we had discussed in the last webinar also. Uh, <coughs> there are uh, bus bar mounted SPDs are available in the market. Once you connect, uh, use bus bar mounted uh, SPDs, the wire length will be very less. And due to this lesser wire length, lesser connecting lead lengths, voltage drop across it will be very less and you will get a very higher, uh, very lower voltage protection level. And optimum uh, protection can be achieved using bus bar mounting SPDs. Uh, where the voltage drop across the over current protection in the SPD branch circuit is already taken into around, uh, account. This we will discuss in the further slides also. We have to ensure that while calculating the voltage protection level, voltage drop across the OCPDs, the backup protection has to be calculated <coughs> and has to be considered as well. Uh, where the protection according to over voltage category 2 is provided, but the over voltage category 3 or 4 equipment is ins uh, installed at this location. That means there are multiple uh, over voltage categories 1, 2, 3 and 4. Uh, over voltage 2 category says that equipment uh, impulse withstand should be 2.5 kV. So we have chosen the protection according to over voltage category 2, but the equipment which is going to be connected at that place is uh, comes under over voltage category 3 or 4. There this particular margin can be ignored. Now this is how a normal SPD is uh, connected. Uh, let's say A is a line, uh, line conductor or live conductor. So there will be a wire length A uh, and then there will be an OCPD over current protection device. Then again, the, from that OCPD to SPD, there will be a wire of length B and from SPD to work, there will be a wire of length C. So the total uh, connective wire length will be A plus B plus C. So we have to calculate the voltage drop across uh, all these th uh, small parts of wire A, B, C. <clears throat> then again, uh, SPDs and backup fuse. Uh, this is one of the most... Uh, I mean, I am sure a lot of people have a lot of questions about this backup protection. Why do we need backup protection and what backup protection we are going to uh, select? How fuse ratings are going to se be selected? So this we are going to discuss in this webinar. Uh, first is, again, SPDs are the most sensitive devices in the electrical circuit because uh, they have a response time in nanosecond. They are the fastest device in electrical circuit. And the uh, SPDs are connected between line to neutral or line to P uh, that we had discussed in the earlier slide, whether it is a 3 plus 1 connection or a 4 plus 0 connections. Uh, SPDs offer a very low impedance during the transient voltage. Uh, almost they create a short circuit. Uh, this we discussed in the last webinar also. Once there is a uh, <coughs> over voltage across SPD terminals, they create almost a virtual short circuit and by uh, offering a very low impedance. And that is how they create EQ potential. Now, MUV based SPDs will create a short circuit during TOV. Uh, let's say uh, a normal SPD will have a maximum continuous operating withstand capability of let's say 300 volt. And then there was a temporary over voltage due to some reason, let's say a neutral cut or something. SPD was experiencing 440 volt, a temporary over voltage condition. During that time, if that particular voltage condition is prolonged for a longer time, SPD can fail. While failing, it can create a short circuit. Secondly, in case of spark gate based SPDs, uh, the short circuit can be created due to follow current, which again can result in fire. Now, how do we protect our system?
from this kind of uh, problems <clears throat> so every spd after a certain time uh, will come to end of its life while coming uh, to end of its life there are two possibilities spd may fail in open circuit mode or spd may fail in short circuit mode if it fails in open circuit mode uh, there is no problem spd disconnect itself from the circuit but if an spd fails in a short circuit mode there will be a short circuit current which flows through the spd now like for example if this is an spd and there was no fuse once this spd fails there will be a short circuit current which flows from the line through the spd into the ground now conduction of this short circuit current will be very high and energy dissipated will be very high an spd can catch fire and we have to ensure that spd has to be disconnected from the circuit as uh, early as possible i am repeating again once the spd reaches end of its life we have to ensure that spd disconnect itself from the device from the circuit for that purpose we are uh, using a additional fuse which is called uh, of, uh, often called as backup protection so, <clears throat> so generally drindel mounted spds are tested with gl bar gg fuses or hrc fuses all the standards they recommend gl bar gg and hrc fuse only for spds uh, now this backup fuse is only required when the line fuse is more than the specified value this again we are going to discuss in the further slides now in india uh, we have we want our dbs to be fuseless so normally what people do is instead of using fuse uh, they'll use mcbs and lot of manufacturers also sometimes they'll just give a recommendation of using M mcb or mpcbs which is not at all safe it can it is really violation of safety and can cause in a uh, fire hazard because fuse and mcbs have uh, completely different tripping characteristics they they have a completely different uh, tripping curve so it's not important that 63 amps fuse will trip in the same time as a 63 amps mcb so we have to be very careful while choosing a backup protection okay so uh, this is a video of what will happen when spd fails in a short circuit board and a proper backup protection is not chosen this is a small video uh, from uh, karnataka one of the petrol pumps in karnataka So this particular video was taken from one of the place in Karnataka. That particular SPD was experiencing TOV conditions, and it failed. While failing, it created a short circuit, and there was no backup uh, protection was installed in that SPD uh, with that SPD, and hence it resulted in fire. You can see the images. What was the outcome of that blast? How the SPD has created a fire. So we have to be very very careful by choosing a backup protection so that uh, our SPD, our circuit, everything is safe. You know, this was one of the uh, one application of backup fuse uh, to protect or disconnect our SPDs during the event of SPD failure. Another application of backup fuse is, uh, <clears throat> which is explained very well in IS seven three two, is protection to continuity of supply or protection to continue uh, priority to continuity of protection. Like in first case, we want priority to continuity of uh, supply. So let's say uh, at the end of the life, SPD one has failed. Sorry, this uh, SPD has failed. Once this SPD fails, this fuse will blow. <clears throat> this fuse will isolate the SPD from the supply, and uh, the supply will not be disconnected. Especially in case of like uh, process industry and all, they don't want uh, disconnection of the supply. So in case one. Uh, during the event of spd failure we have ensured the continuity of supply now case 2 where continuity of protection is important like we don't want our equipment to be unprotected at any point of time here <clears throat> when this spd fails uh, this fuse will trip once this fuse will trip the supply will be cut to the equipment your equipment will be protected 
<coughs> but it will not get any supply. To restore the supply, you have to change the fuse. And once you change the fuse, again your SPD will be in operation. So here we have ensured uh, priority to continuity of protection. Whereas in the previous case, we have ensured priority to continuity of supply. Now the third case is where priority to uh, priority to continuity of supply and protection both are required. Uh, in that case, we have to use a connection somewhat like this. If one SPD fails, other keeps the protection. For example, if the left SPD fails, left fuse will blow, uh, blow but still right SPD and right fuse is there in the circuit. Your equipment is still in the protected. For that, we have a product that we are going to discuss. Like for that, this kind of product can be used. Uh, it's our uh, Protect T2 uh, ADV model, advanced model. It has two MOVs inside all the uh, plugs. So once the main MOV has failed, the backup MOV will be under operation. So these are tested with VD as well, US certification. These are pluggable device. Uh, there is a locking in between plugs and base. So it is vibration and shock uh, stand uh, capability it has. Uh, multiple voltage engines are available. Again, it has a uh, reliable disconnector. There is a thermal disconnector inside the SPD. Early warning system. That is a three-stage life indicator. That means normally when SPD, uh, it, which has a flag indication, when it is green in color, it's working. When it's red in color, it's not working. Whereas in this case, from green, it will go to yellow. And from yellow, it is going to change to red. <clears throat> so redundancy can be achieved for the critical loads. And you will get continuity of protection as well as uh, continuity of supply. This is how it is inside. There are uh, two flag indications, red and yellow. There are two uh, protective equipment inside the <coughs> SPD. And you can achieve the desired uh, protection. Now, general perception about uh, the backup fuse rating given by the manufacturers. So, generally, let's say a manufacturer has said that uh, up to 125 amps, uh, they don't need a SPD. There is a specified value every manufacturer will give for their SPD. That certain ampere rating. Once your F1, the main incomer is more than that certain ampere rating, then only you need a backup protection. So let's say case one, line fuse is less than 125 amps. So technically no additional backup fuse is required. But in this case, okay, we'll come to that uh, later. In case two, Line current is uh, line fuse is more than 125 amps, and we have to put an additional backup fuse. The condition we have to ensure is F2, the additional backup fuse which we are going to install in the circuit, should be lesser than 125 amps. But <clears throat> in case uh, one, during the end of the SPD life, uh, this has, uh, this fuse will disconnect. This fuse F, uh, once there is a short circuit during the end of SPD's life. F1 will disconnect and you will not get the uh, continuity of the supply. <clears throat> so no continuity of supply during SPD failure in case one. In order to ensure continuity of supply, F2 is mandatory. So F2 can be in coordination with uh, F1 that we are going to uh, uh, show in the next slide. But the main con uh, condition which we are which we have to ensure is F2 should always be sm smaller than F1. Your backup protection should always be smaller than the uh, main incomer or where we are going to connect the SPD. So by putting F2, which is smaller than uh, 125 amps, we can ensure the continuity of supply. Okay, in general, F1 by F2 ratio can be considered as 1.6 uh, by uh, 1, 1.6 is to 1. Okay, now we are going to discuss the various uh, uh, current rating uh, for SPDs, uh, backup fuse rating for the SPDs. Now, case one, where priority to continue protection is required. F1 less than F2, uh, F1 uh, less than 125 amps, no F2 is required, but we have to uh, understand that when, when, when we are not giving F2, we are not going to get uh, continuity of the supply. If we need continuity of the supply, supply we need to put a F2. <coughs> Uh, if F1 is greater than 125 amps, again, we have to put an F2, which is smaller than 125 amps. Now, in case two, where priority to continuity of supply is given, if F1 is 63 amps, F2 can be 32 amps. If F1 is 100 amps, F2 can be 63 amps. If F1 is equal to 125 amps, F2 can be 63 or 80 amps. 
if f1 is uh, greater than 250 amps f2 can be 125 amps now why these values and how these values have come i'll show a chart from the standard <clears throat> i am going to show a chart from the standard uh, in the further slides on that how, what is the uh, impulse current withstanding of 32 ampere fuse what is the impulse current withstanding of 63 ampere fuse that i am going to show in the further slides now <clears throat> that was for general type 2 spds uh, in case of recap uh, spds we have a higher backup fuse rating of 315 amps that means for f1 less than 315 amps no backup fuse is required f1 greater than 315 amps but less than 500 amps 200 amps backup fuse can be installed for f1 greater than 500 amps 315 backup fuse can be installed 315 amp backup fuse can be installed but in this case uh, priority to continuity of protection is not possible for f1 <coughs> greater than the specified uh, max value of the current but how do we ensure the uh, continuity of the supply <coughs> that is case 2 if f1 is 63 amps again we have to put a f2 of 32 amps f1 is 100 amps we have to put f2 of 63 amps f1 is 125 amps f2 will be 63 or 80 amps f1 250 amps f2 can be 125 amps f1 315 amps f2 can be 200 amps f1 greater than 500 amps f2 can be uh, 315 amps the priority of in this case by using this kind of backup protection a uh, priority of uh, uh, priority to continuity can always be achieved uh, further to the fuse we have tested our spds with 63 amps mcbs as, as well uh, also as a backup protection now this we have to be very careful while uh, choosing an mcb if 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 at all a manufacturer has tested its product with an mcb then only we have we can install uh, mcb as a backup protection that too the manufacturer has to exactly specify what rating mcb has to be installed as backup protection so this is the chart from ic 61643 uh, part 12 2020 now you can see <coughs> normally what our priority was or what our priority till now is in while choosing the backup protection is that a backup fuse should always be uh, lesser than the main incomer panel uh, main comer of the panel or the f1 but what we had discussed earlier f2 should be less than f1 but how much less generally uh, the general conception is even for 315 amps or maybe 400 amps panel even in the main incomer panel people are choosing a lesser value fuse the problem with choosing a lesser value fuse is if you see the right column of this chart a 32 ampere fuse is going to withstand 10 9.9 .9 kilo amperes of 8 by 20 uh, surge whereas only 2.2 .2 kilo ampere of 10 by 350 microsecond surge that means once you are installing a 32 amp fuse even though you are going to install a very good quality SPD with a very higher rating SPD, but fuse is not having that uh, current withstanding capacity. For example, even uh, 200 amp fuse, if we take from this chart, it has only 16 uh, kilo ampere of impulse withstand capacity. Whereas generally in class one, uh, in level one protection, the expected uh, impulse current can be 25 kilo ampere as well. So we have to ensure that we are using a higher rating or suitable rating of backup fuse, uh, which is again as per the expected uh, impulse current. So now <clears throat> there are so many confusions, ifs and buts about the backup fuse. How can we solve this thing? So one possible solution is to use SPD with integrated backup protection. So we have developed a product which has an inbuilt uh, uh, fuse inside an SPD. So you don't need to worry about what external backup fuse has to be installed in an SPD. So advantage of these SPDs are these are tested with the latest IEC standard that is IEC 61643 part 11 2011. It has a patented phase GDT technology. It has uh, it will uh, have a safe uh, say behavior under lightning conditions like that is during the event of lightning searches it will not uh, create any fire or create any problems in the circuit it has integrated backup fuse again fuses design allows optimum protection level once you don't have fuse you don't have a connecting wire there won't be any voltage drop across the fuse and the voltage production level will be uh, very low 
Okay, these all SPDs are leakage current free. There is no leakage current. Uh, like earlier, we had discussed uh, in case of SPDs, there is a leakage current. Uh, MOV based SPDs, there is a leakage current because of TO con TOV conditions and all. And this kind of leakage current uh, will reduce the life of an SPD uh, as well as uh, it can create fire uh, during the SPD failure. So, these all SPDs are leakage current free SPDs. Now, shorter connector line, uh, connection lines result is in lower protection levels because of no fuse. The connecting wires will be very less and hence, and hence we will receive a lesser voltage protection level. Uh, since there is no fuse, the space required will be very less. The cost of fuse can be saved, less wiring and less complexity. This is one of the major advantage. Actually, once we use this kind of integrated backup fuse SPD, this all this confusion and misconception about fuse, backup fuse will be gone. Again, it's a reliable disconnection device, impulse current up to 25 uh, kilo amperes, 10 by 350. And one of the most important point is short circuit strength up to 100 kilo amperes. See, normally, uh, <clears throat> if we talk about a big plant or a big a large building, the expected fault current generally is around 50 to 65 kilo amperes. Now, uh, the SPDs, the conventional SPDs which we were using uh, currently were the short circuit rating of that SPD were around 25 kilo ampere to the maximum 50 kilo ampere was there in the market. The normal available SPDs, they had a maximum ISCCR of 50 kilo ampere. But let us imagine we have installed this 25 kilo ampere short circuit rated uh, SPD inside the main panel of a building which has an expected fault current of 65 kilo ampere. Now, during the event of SPD failure, this complete 65 kilo ampere fault current should uh, flow through the SPD. Now, if the SPD don't withstand, don't have the capability to withstand that much amount of short circuit rating, it can catch fire. The same thing is written in IS, uh, IEC 60364. It says that the short circuit rating of an SPD shall not be lower than the expected fault current at the connection point. I am again uh, telling the same thing. <clears throat> if we are going to connect an SPD at a main incomer pallet with a fault current rating of 65 kilo ampere, SPD should have minimum short circuit rating of 65 kilo ampere. But as of now, the SPDs which are there in the market have a short circuit rating of maximum uh, 50 kilo ampere. So we have developed this SPD with a short circuit rating of 100 kilo amperes. Again, these SPDs are pluggable. Let's say you have used you are using a four pole device, and uh, let's say R phase plug has been failed because of some reason. So you can just replace the R phase. You don't have to replace the complete SPD. Uh, vibration and shock uh, withstand capability. Uh, this we had already discussed. Now, in the similar way, uh, uh, similar like type uh, one SPD, we have also developed type two SPD with integrated backup fuse. Again, they are also tested with. IEC 61643 part 11 2011 safe behavior under lightning condition or even during the switching surges while SPD operate it operates safely it has an integrated backup fuse uh, better overall protection because of the lesser wiring fuseler design uh, allows optimum protection level these are also leakage current free uh, it has a shorter connection line because of no fuses it also has a short circuit strength of 100 kilo amperes. Pluggability, they are pluggable. A nominal current of 20 kilo ampere per pole, that is the industrial practice. And a response time of 25 nanoseconds, which is very less. And which is the actual requirement of a standard. Now, this, uh, this particular graph we had discussed in the last webinar also. This is a graph uh, showing the performance of DIN rail SPD as well as strikes of uh, series SPDs. You see, <clears throat> even with the increase in surge current, the voltage production level or let, let through voltage of strike sob is very less. The similar type of uh, operation can be seen in SPDs with integrated backup protection also. They also have a similar type of uh, performance characteristics. The let through voltage or voltage drop across the SPD will be very less and you will get a very good uh, <coughs> effective voltage protection level. So this was uh, the discussion about uh, backup protection. Now while selecting the SPD, there is one more parameter generally people uh, get confused with that what value should be, uh, what value they, they should use for impulse current. 
that is lightning search what what should be the rating of a spd uh, with respect to lightning search so <clears throat> uh, this we are going to discuss in this particular uh, webinar this also we are going to discuss where no specific calculation of current sharing is carried out a general assumption is made which is as per the standard that 50% of a lightning current is conducted to the building's earthing system and remaining 50% returns via the equipotential bonding spds so that means when once there is a lightning strike 50% will uh, lightning energy will be dissipated into the soil remaining 50% will again be diverted into the pow uh, power line so let us say we, uh, if you are considering uh, <coughs> that place that building to be in uh, lpl1 the maximum prospective lightning current in lpl1 is 200 kilo amperes so once the 200 kilo amperes lightning uh, falls on a building as we discussed earlier and, and as per standard also 50% of that soil uh, that lightning energy that is 100 kilo ampere will go into the soil remaining 100 kilo ampere will be diverted to the power line in this case we have to ensure that <clears throat> this 100 kilo ampere while going into the equipment uh, we are using a spd of 4 plus 0 connection all three lines and neutral which is directly connected to the earth so this 100 kilo ampere will be divided into four parts and each line will experience 25 kilo ampere impulse current so we have to ensure in case of lpl1 the minimum impulse current rating uh, should be 25 kilo amperes per pole in case of uh, 4 plus 0 connection and in case of 3 plus 1 connection the value should be line to neutral uh, 25 kilo amperes and neutral to earth 100 kilo amperes this again also we are going to discuss in the further slides So a type 1 SPD which is connected in, uh, at uh, the entrance of the building, in LPL walls, uh, the expected uh, impulse current in the SPD is 100 kilo ampere. In LPS, LPL 2, it is 75 kilo ampere. In LPL 3 and 4, it is 50 kilo ampere. That is nothing but the 50% of the expected lightning current. Like if the expected lightning current in level LPL 1 is uh, 200 kilo amperes. So 50% of that will be dissipated into the ground. Remaining 50% will again come back into the ground, <coughs> into our system uh, through SPD, which is nothing but 100 kilo amperes. In level 2, uh, the expected uh, lightning impulse current will be 150 kilo ampere. Out of that 50%, uh, that is 75 kilo ampere will be dissipated into the cloud, uh, ground. Remaining 75 kilo ampere will come into our building uh, through the power lines. In level 3 and 4, again, uh, expected uh, impulse current is around 100 kilo amperes. Out of that, 50% will be dissipated into the ground and 50% will again come back into our power lines through SPDs. So this is a chart. Normally, we can have a, a general uh, assumptions. <clears throat> so if no risk assessment is made for a general building, like a normal building, apartment or shop, if there is no risk assessment made, we can assume that total impulse current of 50 kilo ampere will be coming into the building. Same particular uh, thing is mentioned is IS732 as well as NBC2016. So <clears throat> we can consider the uh, total impulse current or total lightning current to be 100 kilo ampere and 50% of that 100 kilo ampere will be uh, 50 kilo ampere. That will be the impulse current rating. So in type 1 connection, that is a 4 plus 0 connection, line to neutral, all three lines to neutral will be 12.5 k per pole, whereas neutral to earth will also be 12.5 k per pole. That is in case of uh, type 1 connection or 4 plus 0 connections, where all three lines and neutral is directly connected to work. Now, uh, type 2 connections or 3 plus 1 connection, where three lines are first connected to neutral and then neutral is connected through a single SPD to work. In that case, if the expected impulse current is 50 kilo ampere, all line to neutral connection should withstand 12.5 k impulse current and neutral to earth connection should withstand 50 k impulse current that single pole uh, SPD should withstand 50k impulse current. Similarly, for uh, <clears throat> multiple electricity supply exam, for normal apartment or commercial building or residential building, uh, 50 kilo amperes of expected impulse current can be considered. And again, in type 1, 4 plus 0 connections, line to earth will be 12.5k, should be 12.5k, and neutral to PE should also be 12.5k. Similarly, in 3 plus 1 connection, all three nine to neutrals should have 12.5 k uh, 10 by 350 or impulse current withstand capacity uh, per pole 
and neutral to PE should be 50 kilo ampere withstand capacity per pole. For large building with one LV supply and LPL level 1. So as we discussed earlier, LPL level 1, uh, 200 kilo ampere was the lightning current. Out of that, 50% goes into the ground, 50% comes back uh, to the power line. That is nothing but 100 kilo amperes. In that case, for 4 plus 0 connection, uh, each line to earth and neutral to earth connection should withstand 25 kilo ampere of uh, lightning surge. And in case of uh, second type of connections, 3 plus 1 connections, line to neutral should withstand 25 kilo ampere, whereas neutral to earth should withstand uh, 100 kilo amperes. Large buildings which comes in LPL level 2, which has a uh, expected uh, lightning current of 150 kilo ampere. Out of 150, again, 50% uh, will be 75 kilo ampere. So in that case, line to <coughs> for the first type of connections, 4 plus 0 connection, all three lines to earth and neutral to earth connection should have 18 kilo ampere of impulse current with same capacity. Whereas in type 2, 3 plus 1 connection, uh, line to neutral uh, impulse current uh, capacity should be 18 kilo ampere, whereas uh, uh, neutral to earth should be 75 kilo amperes. Similarly, we have made uh, large buildings with one LV supply level 3 and level 4 and building with in-house transformers. Again, since the building has in-house transformer, we can expect 50 currents of uh, 50 kilo amperes of impulse current. Uh, <coughs> considering the same level 1 and level 2, we have uh, uh, multiple models. Uh, one of the model is Protect T1HS which can be installed at uh, main incoming panel, uh, panel of the building, which is suitable for LPL1 and LPL2. It has a, a lightning impulse current total of 100 kilo amperes. For line to neutral, it can withstand uh, 25 kilo ampere 10 by 30 microsecond waveform per pole. <coughs> and for neutral to earth, it is going to withstand uh, 100 kilo amperes per pole. I mean, there's only one pole for neutral to earth. It is going to withstand 100 kilo amperes 10 by 30 waveform. In this particular SPD, there is no follow current applicable. <clears throat> there is no leakage current as well in this SPD. Uh, this is our patented technology. Normally, in case of SPDs, uh, leakage current is one of the major uh, problems. But we have used our uh, <clears throat> combination of GDT and MOV and hence there is no leakage current and follow, uh, no follow current. Maximum surge current 65 kilo ampere line to neutral and neutral to earth it will be 130 kilo amperes. And that is 8 by 20 uh, microsecond waveform. These SPDs are tested with TOV 120 minutes, 440 volt, uh, with send. Again, this parameter we are going to discuss in our upcoming webinars. MCOV of 300 volt, so that if there is a, there are small voltage fluctuations in the supply, this SPD is not going to be affected by that. Uh, maximum backup fuse up to 315 amps that we had discussed in the earlier slides. A uh, short circuit rating of 50 kilo amperes. This particular uh, SPD has a short circuit rating of 50 kilo ampere. These are pluggables. Uh, it has uh, there is a locking in between uh, base and plug. So if there is a vibration or there is there are some shock, this SPD can withstand that. This plug will not come out. If there is a, a failure in let's say uh, Y side plug, you can just replace that plug. Complete SPD need not to be replaced. Sensitive and reliable state of the art disconnector. It has uh, inbuilt uh, thermal disconnector as well. So in case uh, there is a, this SPD gets heated up due to some reason, due to a leakage current or something, or due to TOV condition, the SPD will disconnect itself from the circuit and ensure the safety of the circuit. Uh, this is our SPD for buildings which are coming under level three and level four. These are these have an impulse current of 50 kilo amperes neutral to earth. Uh, lightning impulse current of 12.5 kilo ampere 10 by 350 line to neutral. Again, there is no follow current in these SPDs. These SPDs are also leakage current free. There won't be any leakage current. Uh, the maximum uh, surge current of the SPD is 65 kilo ampere line to neutral and uh, <clears throat> 130 kilo amperes, oh, sorry, 100 kilo amperes neutral to earth in case of 3 plus 1 connections. Voltage production level of this white speed is are very less. Uh, that is 1.5 kV, which is again uh, as per the industrial standard also. These are also tested with the TOV conditions. For the same backup fuse rating is also 315 amps and it has a short circuit rating of 50 kilo amperes. These are pluggable. Uh, again, it has it also has a locking between uh, base and plug. So that during the transportation, during a, or any other case, if there is a vibration and shock, this SPD plug is not going to come out. 
<coughs> so this was the general presentation about the <coughs> backup fuse and impulse current uh, rating of a spd furthermore topics we are going to cover in our upcoming webinar also so i'll just uh, end my presentation here and uh, you can have this question answer session and maybe dominic sir can take over from here yeah uh, thank you ajay and uh, i would request uh, all the participants to if you have any questions kindly post it so, um, so that we can take it up after uh, mr our moderator uh, mr gopakumar so i would request uh, uh, our gopakumar sir who is now in chile south america uh, it's probably now three o'clock uh, in the morning and he is being awake the whole night for this webinar so i would like to welcome him uh, to sum up and uh, add his value uh, on this particular subject uh, over to mr gopakumar vijay can you unshare the screen hello good morning uh, to everybody hope my voice is clear Yes, Actually, yes. the internet yes. uh, here is not very clear. As a result, uh, probably in between the voices, uh, maybe it gets broken. Mm -hmm. So SPD is uh, all of as all of you know, SPD is actually a very uh, important uh, uh, component in the electrical uh, panel or in the electrical installation because this is the only product which is going to protect the electrical installation from transient uh, over voltages uh, due to lightning or from switching. Basically, it uh, keeps the insulation levels at a very high level or uh, the transient over voltages will pass through the device and uh, this device gets degraded. As a result, uh, the installation's uh, insulation strength will be kept for a long time. So basically, you get a lot of the, the um, life of the uh, electrical installation will be enhanced to a large extent by using SPDs. After all, SPDs are made either by a spar gap or a GD tube or uh, an MOV. If we look at uh, the type 2 SPDs, uh, the actual component which is used inside is a simple MOV. You can buy it from the market for 20 rupees maybe for a three phase you know for a line to neutral application a 230 volt mov probably is 30 40 rupees onwards you you can buy from the market and nowadays the trend is uh, people you know a lot of components or products are coming from china with the very cheap movies and put it into the line Actually, the whole uh, standardization of SPD is uh, becoming very important nowadays because SPDs are becoming a reason for fire in panels. Uh, if you look at the technicalities of, uh, say, for example, a type 2 SPD, more than the component which is going to use or going to work as the discharge element, uh, uh, more uh, safety measures are being integrated into the SPD. A type 2 SPD, conventionally it has got an MOV and a thermal disconnector. In the sense, once when the temperature goes beyond 80 degrees, uh, there is a spring mechanism and the temperature, uh, you know, due to the higher temperature, the uh, SPD is disconnected from the mains. But now, once when we install this SPD into a line, at the end of life of the SPD, most often, probably after 7-8 years or maybe about 15 years, uh, the SPDs are catching fire. As a result, uh, a lot of installations are getting into trouble. So nowadays, the standards are made in such a way that uh, uh, the safety hazard or safety is given more importance. As a result, uh, both I will just share a screen and show you two standards which uh, are probably very important uh, with respect to the selection of SPDs. The first one is uh, 61463 uh, uh, part 12. This is a standard which is published during 2020, uh, which explains about the selection and erection of SPDs. Uh, uh, for power system 230 400 volt 
and uh, the other uh, standard which is uh, talking about the same subject is uh, uh, 60364 part 5 uh, one moment yeah 553 this also talks about uh, spds uh, which has to be selected or which has to be used these the conditions can be used for selecting and erecting spds i just show some of the clauses which has to be taken care while selecting and uh, erecting an spd the first one as you can see here selection of voltage protection level as a function of equipment rated impulse withstand voltage most often uh, spds are installed with long wires even though we are repeatedly telling the users uh, to use uh, uh shortest wire length uh, due to practical reasons due to a fuse in between sometimes due to you know there is no space in the panel board as a result uh, spds with longer wires are used and for your information these spds of course uh, will not have any effect in the network it's just like a dummy uh, keeping uh, something in uh, in your network and believing that it will protect your electronics technically it won't do any job so these in important informations are included in these lines uh, of the iec standard of course we have included this in the national uh, electrical code as well then uh, the 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 uh, you know several selection methods are explained i don't want to i will show you some important measures not uh, don't want to go through the whole thing for example selection of spds uh, with regard to the short circuit uh, current rating iscr in general a short circuit current rating iscr of the spd as stated by the manufacturer shall not be lower than the maximum prospective uh, short circuit current at the connection point of the spd assembly so a new concept which is which is included or which is uh, made in the standard is spd will have a backup fuse the spd and backup fuse together is called as spd assembly so the spd assembly shall have a short circuit withstand which is more than the expected short circuit level of your panel board so here actually uh, for example uh, some spds uh, type 1 spd which can uh, the manufacturer says uh, it can have a uh let's say for example uh, uh, 500 amps of fuse so the combination of uh, the spd and the 500 amps fuse together it can handle only sometime 20 kilo ampere short circuit current and uh, if you connect uh, this spd and the fuse in your panel board at the incoming uh, where probably the short circuit level is much higher let's say 50 kilo ampere uh, you, we are actually risking the whole panel so the safety is uh, uh, gone so this is a very important subject which you should take care so that means uh, the person who is selecting the spd he has to be technically uh, uh, knowledgeable to do the job the second one in general the follow current interrupting rating of the spd if declared by the manufacturer shall not be lower than the maximum prospective short circuit current at the connection points of the spd assembly this is uh, uh, applicable for a spar gap based spd in a spar gap based spd there is a parameter called follow current the follow current rating has to be uh, at par with the short circuit level here also we are finding in several cases the follow current rating of the spd is 25 kilo ampere and uh, the uh, the short circuit rating of the panel is 50 kilo ampere uh, so these are actually dangerous uh, but most often, uh, once when we tell the panel builder, please don't do, uh, use it because this is uh, compromising the quality of your panel. Uh, they end up with saying that, no, 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 the consultant has uh, or the designer has included uh, this SPD and it is a, a, an economical model. So we go for this. Most often, the users are not really taking care of uh, such measures. So just the the idea of showing these uh, um, uh, the lines are to inform you that uh, spd of course what is inside the spd is uh, just sometime an mov which is uh, uh, which can be bought even from the market but uh, as an spd assembly or as an spd 
a lot of safety fe features are included uh, in the SPD. So we are paying actually for the safety features, which is uh, uh, inbuilt in the SPD. Uh, now, uh, the uh, as Mr. Vijay was explaining, uh, continuity of supply and the continuity of uh, protection. SPD has to be actually selected based on continuity of supply, uh, continuity of, you know, uh, 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 the uh, protection or continuity of uh, supply means uh, the question is whether you need uh, protection at the end of life of the SPD or you need the power supply without interruption at the end of the life of the SPD. So these are very much included in the latest uh, standards. Uh, one moment. I am just showing you the standard search protection selection and erection, which is a, a new standard. So this standard has got, uh, it is one of the biggest standard which is published in recent days. It has got about 215 pages. So a lot of, uh, 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 you know, new informations are shown here. For example, if you wanted to use an SPD, let's say uh, V-type connection, how to make the V-type connection. If you use it in, an, uh, in a panel board, how to make it uh, and how, how you can reduce the length of the wire and all such informations are included in the standard. So the most important point is uh, the SPD is not uh, Probably SPD, you know, looks like a small component in the electrical installation, but it's a critical component. Uh, most of the installation, of course, we don't even use SPD. So using SPD is uh, actually a mandatory requirement because it enhances the life of your electrical installation. Uh, uh, without SPD, of course, the transient over voltages will uh, deteriorate the insulation and the life of the installation will be going down. So the question is whether you want a long life for your installation. If you want a long life, of course, you need an SPD. And the second is if you are using an SPD, how safe this SPD should be. So safety of SPD, as I said, is very important. Otherwise, this item is going to or this component is going to create a problem in your network. And these are in our last uh, webinar, uh, we explained about the importance of wire length and this time the importance of uh, backup fuse. Backup fuse means the fuse which is uh, which has to be used along with the SPD. Of course, every SPD require a fuse. And most of the SPDs available in the market are tested with the uh, uh, HRC fuse. But uh, 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 once when we inform or once when we tell the panel builder to use uh, HRC fuse, they say, no, my panels are fuseless, so we don't use HRC fuse, we use only MCB or MPCB. Actually, these are violation of uh, safety rules. Uh, so if the manufacturer uh, in his test report, let's say, for example, VDE or Kima test report has tested the device with uh, uh, HRC fuse, uh, you must use a HRC fuse. Don't try to change to MCB, M uh, MPCB and all. Manufacturer, the salesman can claim anything. Salesman say that, uh, you know, we, I will give guarantee. But uh, after 15 years, this device is going to help you after 15 years and nobody knows what is going to happen after 15 years. So we have to be very careful. So with this, I would like to make a conclusion. SPD is a very important uh, component. Of course, it's a new component uh, in the electrical network. The usage of SPD is quite less in our nation because uh, most often, uh, uh, you know, people think that even the installation can work without an SPD, then what is the need to put an SPD and increasing the cost of the installation? The answer is, if you install an SPD, your electrical installation's life will be much more. So over to you, sir. Uh, Mr. Dominic. Oh, thank you, sir. We have, I think, a lot of questions today. Yeah. So, if you install SPD, the life is longer. So, uh, I think uh, Shishpal uh, Negi's uh, question uh, is answered here. Uh, what would be the difference of impact in case of wire versus bus bar? Why are why we are saying that at uh, 0.5 meters wire shall be used? Nothing about bus bar. 
Would you like to again highlight something or uh, should we skip this? Yes, actually, I tried uh, typing the answer, but by mistake, I clicked the online, you know, answer online. So uh, then I could not type. Okay, anyway, uh, okay. the question is uh, what to, would be the difference uh, impact in case of wire versus bus bar? Yeah. Uh, actually, if we use a wire, the tendency of increasing the length and bending the wire is much more. As a result, the effectiveness of the SPD is gone. Whereas if you use a bus bar, uh, the first advantage is that these SPDs, which was explained in the last webinar, they can be mounted directly on the bus bar. If you put directly on the bus bar, the wire length itself has become zero. The effectiveness of the SPD is very high. So, uh, in comparison to wire length, of course, the SPD bus bar mounted can give a much better performance. This is the answer. So, Haribabu, so, so Sorry, sir. Yeah, Mr. Nara. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, Nara, please mention the minimum wire size to connect SPDs from bus bar or fuse for a 50 kVA system. Yeah, 50 kiloampere uh, short circuit uh, braking capacity system. Uh, Mr. Nara is asking what the wire size which can, which has to be used for this kind of uh, a device. Mr. Nara, if you if you look at uh, the uh, size of the wires which has to be used for the purpose of handling lightning current or surge current is quite less. It may be 16 square millimeters or so. Uh, whereas if you if your fault current is much higher, so you actually you must use a, a higher size uh, uh, wire or higher size bus bar. So much, much bigger. This you, we can calculate it uh, because first we need to understand the uh, the type of backup protection you are using. Based on the backup protection, we have to find out the temperature which can rise and uh, the disconnection time and we can uh, calculate the size of the bus bar or wire. Of course, it need a much bigger wire. Uh, Ramashish Banerjee is asking where to install SPD at main or sub -deep. This is SPDs are required at the main distribution board as well as a sub distribution board. So the question is uh, if your building doesn't have any uh, uh, lightning protection of if there is uh, no uh, overhead uh, line connected to your building then uh, a type 2 SPD is required but at the main distribution board. So first is at the main distribution board. Uh, then if you have a larger building, of course, at the sub-distribution board also, you need SPDs. Oh, Tanmay Pandya is asking, what is TOV condition? Yes, actually TOV uh, stands Tempor for temporary over voltage. So there are several conditions with which uh, temporary over voltages can exist. Uh, one of the condition is in case of uh, neutral isolation in a three-phase system. Of course, uh, uh, there can be a higher potential between line and neutral, which is up to 400 volt for a longer duration. Uh, the second case, uh, probably in case of a, a, a lightning, uh, sorry, in case of a short circuit, uh, uh, sorry, in case of a, a fault on the HT side of the transformer and uh, if the TOV at the LT side is not taken care as per the clause 4.5 of IA 732, of course, up to five seconds, a higher potential can come in the LT side between line and earth. So there are several conditions with which a temporary over voltage can happen. The SPD which you are uh, installing must be able to withstand those temporary over voltage. Okay, uh, move on to Anand Sina. Uh, thanks, but one one milli home uh, homes is as per mega the, sorry sir one mega home uh, one mega homes is as per IEC, but the hospital nowadays are following ANSI as per ANSI should be hundred mega homes. So is one mega homes is safe. Mr. Anand Sinha, for India, ANSI is not applicable. ANSI is an American standard. We are in India. So Indian standards are applicable. And for India, there is a standard which is published recently called as National Electrical Code of India 2023. 
So uh, one mega ohm uh, in a normal electrical installation is enough uh, to meet the requirements of the Indian standard. As I said, the ANSI is not uh, applicable to India. Probably if you are referring to hospital in some other nation, of course, you should refer to ANSI if ANSI is, up, uh, is accepted in those uh, 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 standards of those countries. Uh, more to Bal Chandra Agarwal, which is preferable as backup protection? Fuse or MCB, and why? Uh, actually, we have to look at the manufacturer's catalog, or sorry, sorry, not the catalog, manufacturer's test report. You find out uh, uh, the device which is used as a backup protection in the test report. Uh, if the test report says uh, HRC fuse, then you should use uh, HRC fuse. And if it's MCB, you can use an MCB. But then, most important, what is this test report? There are uh, manufacturers uh, in India or manufacturers uh, or suppliers of SPD in India, those who actually buy from China, put a nice brand name, create a document. Uh, if you ask for a test report from a particular uh, laboratory, of course, within 10 minutes, they will give you the test report uh, 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 and the claim whatever you need. I'm not talking about, uh, uh, let us say, this is a low-class uh, SPD. I'm not talking about a low-class SPD. If you go for a high-class SPD, probably, let's say, for example, tested in a VDE or in a chemo laboratory, so those uh, uh, you you look at the test report, uh, find out the protective device which is used as backup protection, and you select based on that. Why I make this uh, statement is most of the time, the panel builders are uh, stressing as uh, for, as a as a supplier. Panel builders uh, tell us that uh, no no no, your competitor says uh, his device can be used with an MCB. Why you are insisting for a HRC fuse? As a result, after a few discussions, sometimes the, the 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 you know there can be chances of uh, violation. So th this is uh, not uh, correct. Uh, we should uh, follow what is written in the test report. Uh, moving on to Anand Sinha, he seems to be electrical safety auditor. Uh, is talking about uh, hospital as the even bypassing. ELCB, RCCB is saying that even small leakage strips the supply. So is this a big challenge that he's asking? How do we counter that? Actually, ELCB and RCCB will not uh, unnecessarily trip if it is selected and erected uh, as per the recommendation. Now, if the selection and erection is made as per the recommendation and if these devices are leaking it means that there is a faulty equipment so rather than uh, rather than you know bypassing the elcb the the customer they have to find out uh, the uh, leakage in the device and uh, they have to rectify the leakage that is the correct way or in a hospital medical location where Continuity of supply is uh, mandatory. You can go for an unearthed system. Both are possible. Unearthed system, of course, uh, you don't need to worry about the disconnection or tripping of such devices. Uh, Alpesh Pandya is asking the whole presentation. Alpesh, if you go to Mr. Gopakumar's blog or Cape or Sol, so you will find all the previous uh, uh, presentations, in fact, last presentation. So it's available uh, in the blog. Uh, you can follow Mr. Uh, Gopa Kumar uh, in his LinkedIn and his Facebook and uh, uh, his website. It's all the information you wanted for a group study. You can definitely use this as information. So Balchandra Agarwal will back up fuse F2 always blow when whenever SPD conducts. It is not like uh, it always blow. Uh, the backup fuses, it's a real application is at the end of life of SPD because SPD is uh, not eternal. At some point of time, it will fail uh, due to de degradation, deterioration, or probably due to a higher surge current. So once when uh, the end of life of SPD, of course, the fuse is required. 
So Balchandra Agarwal again is asking, in, in US, why SPD tested to class one test are not required? Is referring to IEC and IEC 616. Yeah, they actually, uh, they follow a different concept. Uh, they don't follow the concept of this uh, 10 by 350 microseconds uh, uh, impulse current. So class one test uh, is for a 10 by 350 microsecond impulse current. Uh, so since they don't follow it nationally, they have not accepted the climb of 10 by 350. They go for uh, uh, the type two SPD. Okay. Uh, going to Ramesh Bharaj again. Sir, in case of installing AC, can we replace voltage stabilizer with SPD? Actually, the purpose of both of these devices are different. SPDs are to reduce the transient or disturbances, high voltage disturbances, short duration high voltage disturbances in your network whereas uh, stabilizer is for a different purpose because it uh, stabilizes the voltage so yes. you cannot uh, change both but nowadays most of the cases our uh, voltage supply is more stabilized and you don't need actually a stabilizer and number two as we always say stabilizer actually add the impedance in between uh, which actually uh, don't allow the mcb to trip in case of uh, trouble. So we have to be very careful in using uh, the stabilizer. But including my answer. house, you know, we use, uh, <laughs> we use our stabilizer because the yeah. supplier says, if you don't give put a, a stabilizer, I won't give guarantee. So we have to actually so change those concepts. Maybe five, 10 years back, uh, stabilizer in very high sales and uh, a fridge, refrigerator, TV, everywhere you want to use uh, stabilizers. And nowadays, it's not, you know, they don't even insist for it. So, Parthipur is asking how to check existing SPD's health. Yes, Mr. Parthipur, there are uh, devices available, there are test equipment available. We have a test equipment with which uh, all kind of SPDs, type 1, type 2, SPDs can be tested. It actually gives a small impulse voltage and uh, uh, test the and gives the output of the clamping voltage or voltage protection level. It's possible there are devices available. Okay, uh, Bal Chandra is asking a technical question and is asking whether it is correct. Uh, would you like to read out, sir? It is uh, too technical. Like yes, you, class like one, it. class one tested SPD, which withstand the partial lightning current with a typical waveform of ten by three fifty microseconds and require a corresponding impulse test current. It is different eight by twenty of IEC six one six four three. Mr. Agarwal, please note that ten by three fifty is a in the laboratory, it is produced as a 8 by 20 wave shape. Whereas in class 1 test, the actual impulse current is 8 by 20, but the energy, the specific energy and the charge, that means the capacitor which is producing this impulse current, the size of the capacitor is bigger, its charge is bigger. So the energy which is going to flow uh, through the SPD during this duration is much higher. So practically, even though the set uh, shape is 8 by 20, but uh, after the impulse, you can see that the due to the higher charge, the set uh, impulse current wave shape has uh, changed. Actually, you don't need to be get complicated with uh, these wordings from the standard. The 61643 part 11 is not for an user. That is for an SPD manufacturer because that is the test and performance requirement. So. Uh, SPD manufacturer will take care of it. You have to refer part 12, selection and direction of SPD. Okay, more to, again, the question from Balchandra is building without LPS also shall be provided SPD. Yes, of LPS. course. Yeah. Yes, of course. If you yeah. have, uh, for example, an overhead line, uh, 
uh probably the uh, the overhead line can have a direct lightning strike and your equipment can fail in that case you need a type 1 spd at the mains incoming and if you don't have if you don't have external lightning protection and if you don't have an overhead uh, distribution line then you can go for a type 2 spd at the mains incoming sir abdul majid is asking what type of spds are used for dcs plc panels and where is to be connected what type of spd is uh, yeah uh, these uh, you see there is uh, there are different kind of spds uh, type 2 spds are there uh, uh, for power supply if you talk about uh, control panels plc panels if you have communication wires uh, then we have to find out the type of communication Uh, whether the communication is operating uh, in uh, in common mode or differential mode whether uh, functional earthing is there in your panel whether the frequency of this particular transmission the voltage of this particular communication so based on all these parameters we have to select uh, spds one of the subject which is of uh, which is becoming uh, important nowadays in these dcs and plc panels are functional earthing most often we put an spd and protect the protective earthing of the panel we neglect the functional earthing of the panel which is sometimes a separate terminal as a result uh, the uh, uh, failure continues but of course we have the expertise we have to really look into your single line diagram we have to go through the uh, uh, the, the the entire uh, technical parameters of the panel and we can uh, select uh, the appropriate uh, protective measure thank you Rajkumar, does SPD required any protection devices on its circuit? Uh, does SPD require any protection device on its circuit? Of course, if the if you want the continuity of supply, then uh, you need uh, a protective device. And uh, if your panel board, for example, the circuit uh, fault current is very high, then also you need a backup protection to. ensure that the uh, spd is failing safe at its end of life so satyan narayan is asking how to assess the life of spd or the time for replacement of spd actually most if if the spd is of uh, a standard quality standard tested uh, device uh, then you can expect uh, an average of 20 years Oh. if it is selected and erected appropriately 20 to 25 years would be the life of an spd but again if you put the spd closer to a capacitor switching panel then of course the life will be little bit lesser sonu sharma has a doubt how do you check whether spd is working properly actually this is a very important subject you cannot you have to only trust the manufacturer so manufacturer as i said the manufacturer's test report is the only way which you have to trust uh, so as i all as i said in between uh, it is very peculiar in india uh, some you know companies go to china buy some uh, component and put a very nice uh, label and uh, whatever the test report you are asking uh, within 10 minutes 15 minutes or 2 days uh, the test report is in front of you so you please don't trust this uh, you use uh, only vde or kima approved devices go to vde or kima websites online these certificates can be viewed check whether these certificates are genuine or not and then select an spd don't trust the Uh, uh, the test certificates or test reports which is uh, circulating in the market uh, uh, from from uh, test laboratories uh, across india unfortunately there is no laboratory in india who can test an spd but uh, test certificates are there uh, you know available a lot so be careful so it's a very very strong message that you are giving to the audience you know don't trust that what is there in the market uh, from chinese and all that so you also gave a yes, hint to that you know there are 
uh, way of checking through website of HEMA. Yeah, it is. It is actually. It's a. It's a pity that once when we come to electrical safety, you know, we are putting lot of efforts in educating the market, but still, uh, the the usage of all these spurious products uh, are there. And uh, if you look at uh, you know lightning protection and the earthing has become a subject, uh, even though it's a very very important subject. Uh, you can find uh, you know thousands of experts and uh, uh, thousands of uh, you know companies making and selling these uh, devices uh, without any quality check because nobody bothers about these devices lightning protection most often is uh, used uh, just to convince somebody like the electrical inspector he is asking some questions so put something so that his uh, requirement is closed uh, so uh, the seriousness of these devices are not uh, uh, made. This is the reason, uh, for example, if you look at an MCB, uh, you cannot find a lot of, uh, you know, uh, low-class low uh, MCBs in the market. Whereas with respect to SPD, you can find uh, hundreds and thousands of SPD. For example, you just Google, you can find uh, SPDs in the, in the uh, online uh, stores uh, such as... Uh, uh, you know, I don't want to name. Online stores are selling hundreds of SPDs, and uh, out of these hundreds, uh, 99 percentage is uh, made in our neighbor country and to put a label and uh, create a nice document and a video and sell it. This is not, uh, uh, and uh, whatever the test report you need uh, are uh, immediately provided. Uh, it won't work. Be very careful. This is a strong message, as you said, Mr. Dominic, I want to give. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, a spurious material, electrical, it's, it's, it's a big menace in India. Uh, if you go to Delhi, Chandni Chowk, uh, you will get, uh, in fact, may you'll be surprised, even Cape material are duplicated and kept in the shop there. Uh, so there has to be a barrier, there has to be a checking method. Uh, how do we uh, differentiate? Uh, between the original and duplicate or the, how do you um, confirm the test certificate that has been uh, given by these suppliers. So, so I think NFE could address this in the future uh, of the various events that you have planned. So uh, moving on to a particular difference between SPD and lightning arrestor. Yeah, uh, the names of the, the earlier name is uh, lightning arrestor, but you know, the correct name for the device used in the power line is SPD. Lightning arrestor is a name which is used for several different purposes. Sometimes a high voltage surge arrestor is also called as a lightning arrestor. Sometimes the rod, air termination rod is called as a lightning arrestor. So SPD is the correct word. Uh, nursing how is uh, checking where when we have a good grounding do we still need a such protection yes of course a good grounding ensure that your uh, installation is safe against uh, earth fault or earth leakage whereas uh, as spd ensure that your uh, transient over voltages are limited as a result your life of your installation is much more actually oh, yeah. one one, sub one important yeah. point is uh, SPD is a product which is a, which is most of the time its usage is not felt. So it's like a passive device. It will be like, you know, silently it is sitting in the circuit and keep doing its job. As a result, even if a spurious SPD is used, nobody realizes that, uh, you know, it is uh, uh, whether it is working or not. This is one of the advantage for uh, the low class uh, products uh, sold in the market because nobody knows whether it is working or not. Some of the SPDs, a uh, few years back, I bought a, a, a set of SPD from the market. We were just trying to find out what exactly inside. Uh, surprised to see that inside the, the its casing, it contains nothing. Oh. It was an empty, it was a, a beautiful yeah. casing, very beautiful casing. Two uh -huh. wires goes inside and inside is a simply, you know, it's a, it's a, sealed uh, uh, with a with a resin and inside is nothing That's so <laughs> we have to be very playing, careful uh, playing with uh, you know the such a critical equipments and also life so 
Uh, this is these are the challenges that uh, how do you overcome? Uh, how do you trust it? What kind of verification, tested certificate? Uh, it's, a, it's a big challenge uh, in India. How do we get a quality product? And how do we check? So you're able to break it and see. But how how many people can do that? And uh, they'll say if you break the seal, you no know warranty. So people are also afraid to even the break the seal, which says do not open warranties. Not so. These are the questions. Anyway, we have four more questions, sir. I will try and complete. It's almost 12.32. We are you know, taken two minutes more. Uh, anonymous, uh, our equipment is connected to UPS. Do we still need surge protection? Yes, of course. So whether you have a UPS or not, uh, of course, uh, surge protection is required. Sometimes SPD is required even to protect the UPS. Okay, Sonia Mittal, I think uh, we have uh, answered this question that uh, by uh, a member, other member who asked. So I move on. Uh, Naresh Babu, the last question uh, today uh, Is there any impact in SPD for doing IR test? Of course, once when you do an insulation resistance test, SPD has to be or SPD must be removed from the circuit. Then only you should do. And that instruction is generally available as a sticker uh, along with the SPD. So you should uh, be very careful in this particular case. <clears throat> Wonderful. Uh, so with this, uh, we end the question and answer session. Uh, is Vijay Singh, are you there, uh, Vijay? So Yeah, uh, yeah I'm here. Uh, okay, next uh, webinar will be on 27. Uh, many of them, uh, you know, asking whether can we do it evening at 4 o'clock so that they can comfortably uh, some are traveling at the time of 11 o'clock that we have we've been doing. We've been successful in doing at 11 a.m. in on Saturday, which I felt uh, most of the consultants are free to you know attend. Uh, probably we'll try this at four o'clock on the third and the 27th. Uh, let's see, because I have got a lot of requests. Uh, you know, most of the time we cross over 1,000 registration, 60% or 40% is the turnout. So we'll try out at them. What is the next uh, session that you will be talking, uh, uh, Vijay, on the last uh, session on SPDs? Sir, we'll be discussing about the remaining parameters like uh, TOV conditions. We have not discussed it yet. Uh, those conditions, we are going to discuss the parameters while selecting the SPD. And the short circuit rating parameter, like how uh, uh, choosing a wrong parameter or choosing a wrong SPD can cause a fire hazard or something like that. Okay. These, uh, these things we are going to cover. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Vijay. And uh, we will convey this to all the previous participants and today's participants. And we have a huge database. We'll try and see that we reach out to maximum electrical engineers across the country. That's the objective to have a quality installation of electrical system. So that is the objective of this knowledge uh, uh, series that we have been doing. And also, I would like to inform you, uh, NFE, National Federation of Electrical Engineers for Safety, is been conducting a two days workshop on the National Electrical Code of India 2023. We completed successfully in Chennai last week. And the next week is in Bangalore, in MS Samaya College. We are doing on 4th and 5th of uh, um, May. Those who are from Bangalore or Karnataka, uh, please do share. I think uh, my colleague Navya has uh, uh, given the link on the right side for registration. Uh, you can also share it with your team and colleagues uh, in your company. Uh, I would urge everyone to participate in the today workshop. So from uh, Bangalore, we will be going to Mumbai. Mumbai is on 11th and 12th. The Institute of Engineers will be doing there. And 11th and uh, 18th, 17th and 18th, we will be doing in Hyderabad. Uh, people from Telangana and Andhra can join us in Hyderabad. This is a physical seminar for two days. So for NFP members, it's free. And those who are not member of NFP, please, uh, I would request um, uh, uh, Navya to put the link on the NFE membership. So people who are not yet become a member, you become a member, it's free. Otherwise, it's 2,500 for the 
two-day workshop. And those who attend will get a certificate, a certificate for our, of attendance. I would urge everyone to participate uh, in the ongoing workshop. So we are trying to cover five cities. Later, we'll be going to tie two cities. We'll be covering almost all. And this is in association with Bureau of Indian Standard. So I'm sure those who participate will enhance your knowledge, enhance how to interpret the standards and codes, and it will help the nation. Ultimate goal is to, you know, somewhere you be a part of this change, making our nation electrically safe. So thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for your patience in attending. We had a wonderful session, wonderful questions. We look forward, we look forward to see you on for the third uh, series, the, the last series on SPDs. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gopakumar, and uh, you have know, not slept the whole night, and uh, uh, I don't know how you're going to you know, handle this pressure of timing uh, between India and America. And we look forward to see you soon uh, in Bangalore for the fourth and fifth uh, workshop. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Actually, in my answer, one of the answer which I typed, I made a small mistake. Instead of gas discharge, I put glass discharge. So, readers, please excuse me. Uh, so, now, uh, you know, it's about uh, 3 o'clock here. I'll okay. be starting in another uh, tomorrow afternoon I'll be, and I'll be reaching on uh, Tuesday uh, in Chennai. Then uh, Thursday, Friday, we have the program in Bangalore. Hope uh, I will be recovering from the jet lag <laughs> quickly. <laughs> uh, Thank no, you very much, ensure, Mr. Dominic. No, we will ensure that uh, you are strong and healthy and you get a good sleep and I don't want to kill any more of your time. Uh, I you yeah. know, wish you all the best. Actually, last uh, four days, uh, last four days we had a uh, uh, the IEC TC meeting. Uh, TC meeting means it's a technical committee 64 plenary meeting, which is happening once in uh, two years, uh, where uh, India uh, is a you know member. So I was representing India and I was the head of delegation in this meeting. And it went very well. You know, a lot of uh, new things are coming up. Anyway, we will discuss it in our programs. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vijay. Thank you for a wonderful session. A lot of appreciation for you. And uh, we look forward for an exciting, exciting session uh, on the 27th of May. Thank you very much. God bless you. Stay safe and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.